An extremely significant meeting is taking place in Geneva this week with regard to the impact of the government's austerity measures uh, on the lives of our citizens. As members are aware, the government is being examined by the UN Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. And, you know, as a new narrative develops in the lead-up to a general election about the stabilization of Ireland's finances as a basis for future fairness, it's imperative, I think, that parliamentarians and the Irish people take account of what the UN Committee is saying to us. Otherwise, we are treating the UN process as simply a paper-pushing exercise. And a primary message coming from the UN Committee is that any cuts made as emergency crises measures have to be temporary and restored. And so, for example, the Irish Human Rights and Equality Commission and NGOs have put forward strong arguments to demand the restoration of the one-parent family income disregards payments uh, to, what, to what they were in 2012. Um, one-parent families have become poorer since 2012, and the UN Committee hasn't missed that. Um, but my question to the leader, however, zeroes in on how seriously the government takes what the UN Committee on Human Rights, the, the committees of human rights say to us, and why we as lawmakers are virtually excluded from having any input into the oversight of implementing our international human rights obligations. Minister Sean Sherlock is, reported, is reporting to the committee on the basis of a report compiled by all relevant government departments. But we, parliamentary, we as parliamentarians have had no input whatsoever into what Minister Sherlock is saying. So does it really mean anything at all? And when questioned on RTE as to why the government was not accepting the Constitutional Convention's recommendation to include economic, social, and cultural rights into our Constitution, he said our domestic corpus of human rights law and EU law is sufficient to deal with those issues. Well, I know at least one significant group in Irish society, namely one-parent families, who would vehemently disagree with that. But my question then is this. Can the leader please arrange a debate with Minister Sherlock regarding the outcome recommendation of the UN Committee to Ireland, but front and center of that debate, can the leader ask the minister how will he ensure that elected representatives of the Irish state can pay, play a role in judging whether or not we are meeting our international human rights obligations um, when it comes, it comes to human rights. The Irish Human Rights and Equality Commission has called for the establishment, actually, of an Oireachtas Committee on Human Rights and Equality, and I think that would be a huge leap forward and fits with my own work in getting a subcommittee on human rights set up within the Justice and Equality Committee. Minister Sherlock refer referred to his establishment of an interdepartmental, interdepartmental group of civil servants on human rights. But this does not include one parliamentarian apart from himself. Not good enough.